Hi and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome again. And if this is your first time, my name's Amanda and uh, welcome to my world. So um, usually when I do these videos, we're usually doing like an, unbox an unboxing or we'd be doing a haul. Um, I love to shop for makeup. Um, but this time I'm actually going to do a getting ready with me and um, I'm going to be telling you some serial killer facts and taking you through some of those. So I am uh, only moisturized. Everything else is, is how I naturally come. I don't have eyelashes. I just realized that now, um, but we will do the makeup and I will talk about things about some serial killers. So um, I have some hints here from uh, some buzz feeds and things like that. Um, but we'll just actually talk about just some serial killers in general. I will do better scripts in, in future episodes, but for now, I just thought I would do some top tips. Now, Interestingly enough, I am actually, oh, I suppose I should actually start working. Um, my first thing. So I start with a primer and this is Mineral Infused Face Primer by e.l.f. Um, now when I, have, I've been studying serial kills now since 1989, so a fair while. And um, doing so, what I always found was that there is so many uh, half, half truths and uh, details that sort of don't sort of add up, you know. Um, and I thought I would start actually going through some of these and, and seeing what we can find out. Now, the first one I'll talk about is Ed Kemper. Now, a lot of people love Ed Kemper. Um, love's not the right word, but you know what I mean, that they're, they're more interested in Ed Kemper than any other serial killer. And um, it's quite surprising because when people sort of list the big ones, they do, you know, Dharma, uh, Kemper, uh, but they do Dharma, Gacy, um, Ramirez and people like that, but they rarely add in um, Ed Kemper, which is quite unusual because he is, um, I think, far more in interesting than other killers. Now, I actually have a podcast called Monsters Who Murder Serial Killer Confessions. Now, it's called Serial Killer Confessions, but we don't just do serial killers. Um, where, along with my um, my co-host, we actually break down the confessions of a lot of, of killers and uh, child killers and um, sexual offenders and things like that so i know i look really pale <laughs> believe me it gets better i promise um but it's quite interesting that most people don't know much about ed kemper now ed kemper is two different serial or two different killers in one so he is a family killer um as well as a serial killer so um when he was 15 years of age he actually killed his grandparents now these were his paternal grandparents and um he had had lived with them for quite some time after his mother had decided that she was sick of him and she had these uh, religious manias that she believed um, would set him off on a different tangent and that she believed that he would end up being a rapist and a killer. So um, there is a lot of speculation about Ed Kemper that it is perhaps that he was made into a killer um, purely through his mother's um, religious fervor and so i just don't know where i've just put my foundation I just sort of let you know this is our tart double duty beauty uh it's tart's face tape um so it is quite interesting then to, to see how his life went on and now he killed his grandparents he actually killed his grandmother first um it, it, it was done in anger basically but he was extremely frustrated and um had all always harbored these uh desires to, to kill some of the females in his, his family. Now, his main person that he wanted to kill was his mother and she would actually be his penultimate victim. But he actually did start off as a, um, as a family killer. Now, he killed his grandmother, as I just said, and have said repeatedly since. Oh, I forgot to bring my um, concealer, but that's okay. We can continue to work. Um, so he actually worked, she, he, he actually killed her. And then when his grandfather arrived home he killed him as well purely because he didn't want him to go through the agony of seeing his wife dead so um ed kemper actually went to prison for that for like to, to, to juvenile prison because he was only 15 and um oh that is what i just used then was a coral colors a translucent press powder it is really really old but i do love this um and considering that he had done that and he, he was still clever enough to actually go through it and realize that what he was done was wrong. And there was absolutely no doubt that it was 
going to have long-term effects on him and he actually become quite good friends with the child psychologist that was actually working in in the prison at the time um i still really really pale i'm really hoping that this color comes down i'm under so many lights and i'm usually not working to this sort of light um we we, we may fix that for another channel another day so i'm just trying to make it all a bit warmer warming it all up i really Hmm. <laughs> anyway, we will continue. So, um, he actually, as I said, made friends with the psychologist and he actually would sit in on the interviews with other perpetrators. Um, what we're doing here is a Morphe, uh, bronzer, which is sunlit skin. So that has actually warmed me up. Not that we can actually see it on camera. I'm a bit concerned about that, but we'll keep going. This is just a trial to see if it works. Um, so working with the, um, psychologist as I said he, he would sit in on interviews and during those interviews he learnt what the psychologist wanted to hear what the psychologist expected to hear so he learnt very quickly how to actually get the right answers now over the years and I have been studying this for quite some time I'm actually using the Revolution Pro new neutral Lux shadow palette um, so I don't know if we can get that on camera so yeah um, I'm starting with a transition color. I think we will go quite dark this time. So I will start with Whisper, which is just down here in, in the corner. Um, so he would actually talk to the psychologist about these sorts of things. You know, what the right answer, what's the wrong answer? How come this person's getting parole and this one's not? Um, now, while whilst we're doing this here, as you can see, I have very hooded eyes. So when I open my eye, you basically can't say the color. So um, many people are able to use the larger um, brushes to, to use, but because I have hooded eyes and I am um, over 40, we have to use different ones. Now, this is just a Morphe brush. This is from a pack, so it doesn't have a number on it. Um, I've actually only, only just opened this pack for this. Um, so I just, I just wanted to have a play tonight because I was supposed to be doing the podcast tonight and we're recording it tomorrow instead. So anyway, uh, Ed Kemper learned that psychologists basically have to rubber stamp things when the perpetrator is cured now perpetrator is cured when they answer the right way now if you think to a film like Shawshank Redemption and Red goes up into the parole board into the parole hearing many many times and during those times he would say you know he's no longer a danger to society and you know they can set him free and there isn't any danger there and he's going to be fine now he would be denied the opportunity of, of parole because he wasn't giving the answers that they wanted to hear he was giving the answers that they that he thought they wanted to hear so with that he learned but very soon that it's about what you need to do and say so um ed, ed kemper did exactly the same and so i need a better brush for the next part so getting out of prison just ducking this up a little so I'm now I'm going into karma in this one so um so he would practice and know what he needed to say during his own sessions this isn't very much darker actually um and so when it come time for his own parole he actually got it quite quickly now interestingly enough you can actually go online and you can uh read Kemper's most recent um parole hearing and it's actually quite interesting to read for a number of reasons. All my other, other computers closed and I'm going to get all, all my conversations off. Um, he actually did the same thing with, with his um, parole hearings. Now, he went, to, he went back to prison for the murders of um, numerous co-eds. So now he actually would pick them up um, around the university where his mother actually worked and would... Um, and would rape them and kill them now it's quite interesting that he would um he he actually claims that one of his victims he brushed her breast accidentally when he was getting her out of the car and he actually apologized he actually found that more offensive and that that would have, have concerned her more than what he, he was about to do to her so um what happened then was that he would then kill them but it, it was beside the point the fact that he actually had this this other concern that he had to treat them like like a friend before he decided their time had come to take over. But 
going back to his parole hearings, and and you can read this online. I think it's about eighty pages long. I mean, I, I read it in maybe an hour. It's it's very interesting the way that he plays the game and he talks about that he has friends all over the world, and no doubt he does because. Um, uh, I'm about to go into the Majestic to see if that works. Um, he has many fans, not just people in, interested in writing to him. And I have tried to write to Ed Kemper multiple times and um, he has never responded to my letter. So I'm not quite sure what I'm doing wrong when I can have many others actually respond to me. But he hasn't. But in his parole, he actually talks about the fact that he will come and live in, in Australia should he be paroled he believes that coming here would be his best bet to actually get um the freedom that he so desires the freedom meaning um not being hounded by the media and things like that because in australia we don't actually have sort of those huge paparazzi issues that other countries do i mean um america and england are obviously the most um paparazzi rich than any other country but he believes that should he be paroled he should be allowed to come here now i'm quite amazed as i said though, though we don't have have paps and things i'm surprised that the australian media hasn't jumped on that and now this was a few years ago that he actually said this um now that i've got some some color in there i'm actually just going to brush it all out and make it a bit more smooth before we go in with a secondary color so as you can see, now my eyes are pretty good from where they are. It's obviously nowhere near finished, but having hooded eyes, like I open my eyes and it basically disappears. So it's really, you need to take it beyond that crease that most people, beautiful makeup artists have. And we actually need to go beyond that. Going back in with the same uh, majestic purple, just to make that a bit stronger once again. And Ed Kemper has tried the same tricks as an adult, but it's not working. And, and people know what he's going to do and say, because people are aware that he, he tried this and succeeded as, as a juvenile. But the most interesting part of his um, most recent parole records that, that are online is that the people that are on his um, parole board, they've basically read like a dossier of him on on youtube or buzzfeed or somewhere like that and they've gone in with this incorrect details about his his case and, and it's things that are perpetuated a lot, a lot through stories on him and he keeps getting frustrated with him because she's going oh but didn't you do this and didn't you do that and he's like no that's what it says online but no i didn't actually do that and so it's quite amazing that um these parole boards aren't going in with a non-judgmental, I mean, I know they have to judge, but they're not going in with a clean slate and listening to what the person has to say. Um, I'm actually now going to go in with this jazz it up. I don't know what this is. Oh, sorry, I should probably put it on. It looks like um, speckled concrete. So we'll just see what this does. So it's quite interesting that he actually goes in and starts talking about all this stuff that is online about him. I'm going to actually have to pack this on, I think with a brush we'll try a brush one more time um but he, he gets frustrated with them because they're coming up with all of all of these um sensational stories that are online about him and most of them aren't true and um so it's quite interesting that they go in there having read these sensationalized bios and make their decisions not on what he has to say um, because he really didn't get to say much and, and he would get frustrated with them because especially one of them um, would say, oh, yeah, but didn't you do this or didn't you say that? And he's like, no, that's what the newspaper said, but I didn't do that. I didn't say that. I mean, it's quite interesting that these people who are there to make these judgments have such a poor concept of who these people are. I mean, are they going to, because Ed, Ed Kemper is more well-known, are they not going to release him because he isn't well-known and let someone else out who is purely just not well-known and so that, that person can play the game and get out? It, it totally perplexes me how, how this case actually went on. Now, I'm doing some glitz now just on the inner lid 
just to sort of break up some of that because the jazz it up really didn't work at all but we're just going to try and bring it up a bit anyway so yeah so it's quite interesting as i said how some of these pearl hearings go i'm just using some of the glitz up on my brow line as well but i have to i have to wonder why these people are relying on things like sensational news stories and not the actual case file surely they should be provided with the information and shouldn't be relying on things such as a buzzfeed article to then decide if they're going to release a serial killer from prison or not i mean kemper is actually quite old right now and um well, he's going to be old forever obviously um but it is amazing that we see so few photos of people like ed kemper because um we see them on their arrest and we see them you know at, at their sentencing and then they go to prison and we really don't see much of them unless there's something major in in the in the news and then someone might do an foi to get their mugshot or something like that but ed kemper um it was quite a shock i think it was a 2005 photo that we actually got to see now he's been in prison since the 80s so it's been quite a while since he's been in there and um he's actually now in a wheelchair because he's had a couple of strokes during his time in prison i really need to pack more of that gold on i wonder if i've got some better stuff here no i don't anyway i'll just i'll i'll keep going with this palette it's it's a new one i've tried it once and i did a day look and it was quite easy and now i'm just sort of doing a night look um so we're going to go back into that jazz it up and see if i can get some more of that pigment onto, onto my eyelid i'm gonna to have to use my hands but in such secret because we have beautiful pigment on, on my finger but it's not packing on i should have i should have bought my concealer in so i could have packed it better but we'll just we'll just keep going and see what you can do with this um but in the future, it concerns me that people, I mean, in, information that's on the internet is going to be there forever. But though it's going to be there forever, how long do people continue to hold on to some cases and not others? Because, I mean, there's people in prison. Um, what, one name that jumps to mind is Kevin Underwood. Now, people in certain, in certain regions would know his name uh, purely because he, he killed a girl in, in their area. But, I mean, most people listen to this now we'll go and google um kevin uh kevin underwood because you won't know him now kevin underwood may get out of prison purely because he's not well known so it's this is where we, we get to the thoughts about um impartiality and so if if someone as i said is reading a buzzfeed article and that's how they're going to decide on the person's fate it just really concerns me that that is going to mean that some that sort of don't turn up with a journal article are going to stay in prison long uh, are going to get out of prison earlier even though they may be more of a danger to society now kemper regardless of what he thinks is always going to be a danger to society this uh, man has been released twice once as a early adult well not released twice he's been being incarcerated twice i should say pardon me um and it's quite amazing that he believes what worked last time is going to work this time but it's not and he's going to remain there for uh the term of his his natural life most likely but it does make me wonder how these cases go as i said when people like kevin underwood isn't as well known and doesn't have a buzzfeed article about him that they may get out of jail because they don't have the sensationalism about their case and whether you kill one person or 20 people i think that there needs to be more of a um more of a control over these sorts of, of people um i'm 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 ranting i know just trying to find my eyebrow pomade i don't know where i've put it so i'm going to have to continue with i thought it was in one of my oh there it is i hate this i'm only learning this now this is 
um, a L'Oreal Unbeliever Brow. So I only I got this a couple of days ago in a subscription box. So this is actually new to me, and I really, I really don't think I like it. It's not my favourite, that's for sure. But I'm just trying to. My daughter, who who does my unboxing videos with me, she says that my eyebrows are nowhere near as dark as I think they are. And she's actually coming into camera now. She's coming into the room. Maybe not. She's going past. And she's going to the toilet. <laughs> I'll just I'll share that with the world. Um, but I'm learning about these new things now. Oh, there's something in my eye. Now, I am by no means a beauty expert. I like to sort of more play than anything else. But I thought rather than doing unboxings the whole time, because believe me, I'm going to run out of money. I thought I would talk about things like the parole of Edmund Kemper. And how, I don't know why, I don't know why that en ended up being my subject today. Um, did you know with Ed Kemper, he actually, he has a very good voice. And um, uh, Cameron Britton, who played him in Mindhunter, did a better Kemper than Kemper does. Um, if you ask me. Now, he, Kemper, I'm just doing a little bit more of the brow in this slide. Um, Kemper has done a lot of ebooks. Um, he does a lot of audio books. Um, apparently, he's done several Stephen Kings. Oh, that was too heavy that time. And he's done things like that scratching is my old dog coming in to see what, what I'm doing and why I'm not feeding her, I think. Um, but anyway, she. Um, She's gone now. Um, yeah, so he has done a lot of those recordings. Now, people have been asking me for months and years, actually, um, if I can get a copy of them. Now, I can't, purely because they often, unless it's someone like Stephen Fry doing the uh, e-book, uh, the audio book reading, you don't actually find out who's doing the reading. So it is hard. However, if you jump onto YouTube... There are a few out there. Now, they aren't great because they are sort of recordings of, of recordings, but there is a few out there. Now, I know for a fact he did um, he did a recording of Flowers in the Attic, so I'm pretty sure that one is out there. And it's just about finding it. Now, next I'm, go I'm doing um, Tarte. This is uh, Pro Glow to Go. Um, it's quite interesting doing this. I hope you guys are sticking around. I'm just getting ready to go out and just thought I'd just do some stuff. So, um, yeah, so he's done a couple of e, uh, audio book readings and it's quite interesting because if he's done them, I wonder who else, what other killers or, or prisoners of any sort have actually done these sorts of things. Now, you have a you have a easy person to to get these done, but then you have to start thinking about um, does this take away jobs from from law abiding citizens? Now, I have a lot of friends that do audio books, and you know I, it does it does concern me that they're using serial killers to to do these stories. Now, I I understand that people should earn earn, earn their keep, and that does include serial killers, but when it's at the detriment of people who are in society, it just sort of, you know, makes you wonder. Now, in saying that, it actually takes me back to um, Shawshank Redemption and in that film and book as well, um, they do that, that they use, um, they use prisoners to un undercut people and then they were getting kickbacks to stop them actually I'm taking over some of these. I'm just now. I've just used these two, and now I'm going into uh, the contouring. I know I'm doing this in different orders to other people, but this is what I do. Um, I've used the wrong brush, but it is about the the equality, you know. And and there is a lot of prisoners that do things like that. Like I know in Australia, uh, most of the uh, hospital scrubs. Are made by prisoners in in the laundries of, of some of the major um, jails so you know that they, they do do some things now I have a double chin I'm trying to get rid of it so I just 
highlight a bit now because it's gone a bit too far up that side of the chin, of course. So I just got to try and hide some of this. So I watch a lot of serial killers. Too. Oh, serial killers. I watch a lot of um, drag queens too, so I, I do get tips from them as well. But um, I find it interesting that the jobs that they give to, to people in prison. Now, there are people that don't get roles at all and there's people like Ivan Milat he um he had a garden at one point during oh, sorry during his incarceration but um he actually tossed that out when he had a big fight with one of the prison commissioners so um I actually talk about that I'm writing a book about Ivan it was with Ivan but now he's passed away um I just need to go back into that chin god this I'm so white on this and I have the darkest darkest screens on and it's still really, really white. But anyway, so back to the eyes now. Got to find my eye pencils, which I cannot find. You think you bring everything in and then when you need something, you can't find it. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. Now I'm using, I have no idea. I can't even see this so little. Um, I do liquid liner. This is by... Ico. This would be something I got in one of the subscription boxes. I I subscribe to a lot of boxes. Um, most of the stuff that you get is actually um, skincare, which is a bit frustrating. I'd love more makeup, but they can't. It's hard to do makeup on some of the subscription boxes purely because you can't do it to match everybody's skin color, and they can't do different boxes for different people because then they aren't financially viable so they like to instead just get in there I'm going to blink it in there I can feel it now because my eyes are so hooded it can be quite hard to do this now I need to hold this tight Get this on properly. If you can see that. I prefer the brushes, and this is this is a texture type, which gives you more control, but it doesn't let you control the amount you use. So it can be a bit hard. I think I just had a blowout. No, it's just a shadow. So I just need to let that one dry before I do the other one. I'll put the lid back on for a second. Also, I usually have my fan. I don't have my fan in here. So I can't because I don't want to blink. Now, another interesting part with um, Ed Kemper, and a lot of people will know this, and this is that he actually went to some of his, pro uh, some of his um, probation meetings with the head of one of his victims in his car and in fact he actually uh, took the head inside his home and, and he was in an apartment building and while he was um, heading up the stairs a young couple who lived in the same apartment building stopped him and had a chat for a bit um, and there he is with, with like a big gym bag with his sorry just hit the fan get the mic again and he's there with um, his victim's head in his him back so it's it's quite horrific so yeah we're getting there it's a bit thick still we we'll have to stake it now now what we also have for things like this I hate doing liners I really really hate them um yes you can get these things they're by elf which is um oh god in Australia you can get it at Kmart and it's tape that sort of goes here and helps you build this. Now, I've just done this freehand, so it's not actually working. I'm probably going to have got painkillers on board as well. So, I actually have a lung infection currently. Well, don't worry, I don't have COVID. Um, but I do have quite a significant lung infection. And I'm on painkillers, so... You don't draw as well as you think you do. 
Oh, I just let my. Oh, fuck. We'll get there. I just gotta concentrate because this tip has dried out a bit. It will get there. No, I've lost them both. Lost them both. That's okay. Yeah, so these are just, I end up with Egyptian eyes. Like, you know, Nefertiti eyes that I keep going. But it has, I hate this one. Like, I'm going to have to go in with black eye, black. Yeah, I'm going to have to do this like I normally would have. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need to find some black eyeshadow, and I don't think I have any in here. <sighs> Hoping one of these does. Nope. Oh, this one might. I've got a whole lot of rep revolution in here purely because it's rose gold and I adore the rose gold. Oh, oh, you scared me puppy under there. My dog just licked my hand while it was underneath. Now I'm using a BYS, which is um, a cheap Kmart brand, but it works sometimes. Now I'm gonna lick this purely because no one else uses it. So don't panic. I should have probably used a bit of my spray, but we'll see what we can do. To fix these up. Oh, my screen's gone dead. So, what else can I tell you? Um, yeah. just using some Max Fix Plus to just wet the brush a bit. So, because once you do that, you actually get quite a significant amount of um, like it becomes you get it when you use chalk and you wet it and it actually works. So. This eye is looking slightly better. Okay, we've got this one done. That's a bit doing this one, but it's really hard while this one's still drying. But we're gonna have to fix this. I don't know how we fix this from here, it's quite terrible. Okay, I think we've, I think we've saved it. Hello, puppies under the table. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so my puppies know that if I'm in here, I could be hours, but I'm not going to be today because we're almost done. Okay, I'm just going to have to hold tight for a second while I fix this. Yes, puppy. What you want? Oh, she's trying to get up onto my lap from underneath me, so. Okay. One never goes right. And it's usually this one. So I'm going to have to leave it because I should have used my, my, oh, now she's here. You're not helping me. <laughs> so, oh. so let me just go in there with a little bit of foundation. So back to my shape tape. You get a little bit on here. We're just going to, Cover this up as best we can. Okay. And if I had my concealer, this would have 
gone a lot easier to fix and we've set a bit better too because this is actually cracking all under my eyes we're gonna have to go in there with a little bit more and cut all this out and fix this in post really hard with the dog jumping on me anyway this one's perfect this one is crap oh I'm going to go and use the wrong one on it again. So anyway, we'll try and try and salvage this the best we can. Big thick wing. Big thick wing. It's gonna have to do. If I put eyelashes on you wouldn't have even noticed, but we will get there. Um let me just go back in with a little bit of oops. Oh. I'm going in with some of the Majestic again under the eye on both sides just to brush that out a bit. Can you hear my dog snoring? And I'm going to pick up some of that black just along the waterline as well just to bring it down. And the other eye, which is an absolute mess. I don't look at this eye, just look at this eye. <laughs> um, mascara. Please tell me I bought mascara. Oh. So we'll do the best we can with what we've got. Now I'm going to have to fix up those eyes a bit more. So I, as I said, I didn't bring in eyelashes. I should have. Oh, did you just see me poke myself in my eye? I usually end up with it all over the bottom of my eyes. Okay. Now, a lot of people don't put foundation on their eyes. I do purely because I have quite dark circles and they are quite hooded and I find that by putting on a bit more it just sort of gives me more surface area somehow. So okay. Mm, disgusting. Anyway. Like I tell my daughter, people are so self-involved that they're not going to really care what you look like anyway. But it just sort of helps to look a bit nicer than what I currently look like. This is my first one doing like this and it looks like I've never done makeup a day in my life. And it's very, very frustrating. This is what happens when you use a new pen that I've never used before. Oh, it's just disgusting. You know, a poor tradesman blames his tools, but this I don't think I'm ever going to use again because it just, it just doesn't work. Anyway, it, it's a start. It's a start. Now I need to go back in, give myself a little bit more colour once again, back into the Morphe, uh, sorry, Mecca, which is not Morphe. Oh, God forbid. Um, just to get that back in, go a little bit darker on the sides of the nose, do a little bit of contouring, a little bit between the things, so you create a um, an exclamation point basically. Just a little bit under, almost done, puppy. Almost done. Can you see her? She's almost on camera, but she's just off camera. Sure, she's a beautiful girl. Now. Uh, lip pencils are all here somewhere so we need one that matches so this is just a cheap one I found I think it was from Wish even so it's, it's not the best but it will do for today seeing that we've already made a mess of it we may as well continue so what else can I tell you now Edmund Kemper is known for having one of the highest um, IQs of serial killers. Now it's interesting that people are so caught up on this part and this pencil is just as bad as I thought it was. Um, 
but there is many serial killers that are quite sm a lot smarter than, than he is. And um, that includes people like Rodney Alcala. Now, Rodney Alcala, many people will, will know purely because he was um, on the... I can't believe I can't find any of my lip pencils. This is a colour pop. No, it's too brown. Um, he was on a dating game and actually the girl who won the date with him, like, well, he, he won the date with her, not the other way around, um, actually decided to not go out on the date and I don't blame her. She considered him to be a little creepy. And if you watch it, and you can, it's actually on YouTube. He is creepy. Now, I know that those shows are heavily scripted. But still, there's so much to it that um, it, it brings up an interesting fact. And this is something that on my podcast I talk about a lot. And that is that serial killers are nice. Now, you're going to go, oh, my God, I'm turning this off. How dare she say that? Now, I'm not saying that serial killers are nice people. What I'm telling you is that serial killers are nice. And what I mean is that they will be nice to you. They, they don't go running down the streets like a madman trying to like grab the first girl they find. No, what they do is that they get, get their victims to where they need their victims. Then they strike. Now, if you're going to try and grab at every single person that you see, you're not going to, to, to get anyone. Um, I thought I bought my lipstick up. No, I didn't. Now, as you can see, I've left the inside not painted and the outside painted. And I'll show you why, hopefully, if I bought a second, yes, I did, I bought a second lipstick. Um, my lips are quite thin and quite small. And as you can see, even on, on camera right now, it's actually creating an, an illusion that I have large, thicker lips. Now you do that with your lipstick too, that you sort of do around the edges in, in the dark and, and you go light on that sort of light line. So yeah, so a lot of serial killers will actually um, act as if they're your best friend. I mean, they get, they get partners, they get um, husbands and wives and things like that whilst they continue to kill because they know how to act in, in, in those ways. They know what, when to turn it on and turn it off. Now, uh, it's, it's often called an, a compartmentalism. So this is where they actually um, know that they, they can't be serial killers all the time. And if they were, it would be psychologically exhausting. So what they do is they actually switch it on and off. It's, it's, not, it's not that simple, but, but that's the simplistic way of um, describing it. And so what they do is they create a persona, which everyone knows. Now you often hear people talk about serial killers, that they're quiet and no one knew and they kept to themselves and everything. That's because they need to keep up that facade and they can't keep up that facade if people intrude in, into their lives. So they often, I mean, um, John Wayne Gacy ran KFCs. Um, he was active in local businesses and things like that. But it, it also comes down to a point where they they have to be themselves and to be themselves that they need to shut off from people. So often people who um, live and, and love serial killers, and I mean love them as in they loved the person that they were even before, during and after they were killing, um, it they were they still had that distance now this is sitting underneath i'm gonna to have to shadow that up a bit um but they know how to get away with what they need to whilst they're around the people that they love and then they need to also move away from those people and have their own time god can you see this all my wrinkles i'm on several different eye, eye creams and it's not helping but they find themselves stuck sometimes because um, they often have, actually have failed relationships purely because uh, they don't let people in because if people get in, they know that they're going to get caught. So though they love and they can love, I mean, it's people think that psychopaths and serial killers are one and the same. No, they're not for a start. Two, um, psychopaths can love. It's just 
they love the way they think they should love rather than loving how most people would love. Now, it's very hard to explain that because um, we're all very different and even serial killers are very different and they have their own set of rules and everyone, I mean, we've gone through that, that era of um, serial killers being profiled and all of this and that they follow patterns and things, but, um, oh, I didn't set my face. Um, but they don't follow patterns. They do their own thing. They, they live their own lives in their way. Now it's very different to how we would do it. And, Let's set this face before it falls off under these lights. Um, and to be able to do that, they need to be able to um, live in society. I mean, we see things like um, the show Dexter that talks about him sort of acting in these in these emotions and thinking what he's doing is the right thing. But they are able to do that more so than we are. Oh God, look at all that cream I left on my face. Um, they're able to do that better than we are purely because they're better at acting. I mean, a lot of, um, there's, there's a lot of movie stars out there and I won't name names who, who are just as psychopathic as some serial killers. And this is purely because they know how they need to act and, and they know what they need to do to get where they are. A lot of successful people are psychopathic and if they're not the sociopathic, now the difference really is. Um, because, um, so you say my thoughts are just running together. Are uh, the difference between sociopathic and psychopathic? Psychopathics, um, have, have no empathy. They, they don't care if you hurt, they don't care about your pain. They don't care if what, what they're doing is mean and cruel to you. They will do it because it, it um, it feeds their own, um, feelings and, and, and desires. Whereas, for most people that are, oh, sorry, I'm going in a million different directions. Whereas um, a sociopath is someone who knows what they're doing is wrong. They understand that it's wrong. They understand that you're in pain, um, but they're going to continue to do it regardless. So it's it, there. They can be actually more scary because they understand the normal human persona. Now, again, we, we, there's all that talk about unprofiling um, and everything. I was, I was going to make this point before, before I, I went off on a different tangent, but, um, <sighs> serial killers don't follow a pattern. I know that, you know, there's all this stuff with profiling. And when I started in this field, I wanted to be a profiler, but what I've learned is that human behavior doesn't follow a pattern. We can see patterns in things one human will do. And, Profiling that is yes, but we can't say that serial killer A did this, this, and this. Serial killer B did something similar, so therefore serial killer C is going to do the same pattern. It doesn't work that way. We're all in individual. Like I say to new mums, your baby didn't read the baby book. Your baby doesn't have to follow what the baby book says. Everyone is different, and serial killers are very different. I often get requests about serial killers, and when people say serial killers, they actually think about people like Dharma and Kemper and Bundy and all of those larger killers who sort of focused on on um, one sort of sexual victim, whereas there are so many different serial killers. I mean, there, there's mothers who kill children. There's um, people who um, kill only partners. There are poisoners. There are people who do it for insurance. There are people that do it as part of robberies. There's all different sorts of serial killers. I think in my um, database, I'm, I'm building a massive database, there's actually I think about 35 different sorts of serial killers. So saying a serial killer is actually um, a misnomer because it's, it's, it's one umbrella term, but it doesn't really react to everything. I mean, for one, uh, Gacy wouldn't be included because it says they kill them in different locations. Now Gacy killed all of his in one location. So, you know, so these, these rules and regulations that we have around serial killers, um, it doesn't work and, and so we really need to redefine that and that's actually what I'm trying to do in in what I do with, with my research so um, I will finish there as I said this was just a, a, a trial my eye just did not work and had I put on eyelashes it might not have been as bad um, I need a little bit more on that side where is my um, but yeah I think I just, I don't know. I just thought I'd talk to you guys while I got ready. 
I was supposed to do some other things tonight and and my um, plans fell through. So I thought I'd come and talk to you guys. I'm probably going to put this both on my YouTube channel and I'm going to send it to my podcast people as well and just sort of mix it all together and see what people think. I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know if you want me to sit here and rave at you for however long I've been going for now. I have no idea. I can't even see a time. So um, this could have been going for 10 minutes or three hours. I'm not quite sure. My eyes look terrible. I'm not happy at all. Um, but I think I need to work on the lighting and everything as well. I'm just using the normal webcam on the computer. I've got my microphone here though, which I'm hoping is plugged in. Otherwise I've done all this with no sound. But anyway, thank you for um, joining me today on this discussion as my dogs come in because they know that I'm getting to the end. They know that my voice just changed. Um, as I said, thank you. I hope you enjoyed this chat I had with you. I had no plans of what I was going to talk about. So it was a lot of uh, rambling and things like that. I will promise I will, I will have some notes to keep me on track next time. Um, I will put in the links below uh, what palettes I use and things like that for those that are interested. All of the brushes I've used, I just held up this one. I was going to say Morphe, but this one's actually an Elizabeth Arden. Uh, my mascara was Elizabeth Arden too. This is actually just a sample size. Um, I get lots of samples. I have probably 400 samples of mascara and I find I love this sort it's got like a, a curved brush and I just find that absolutely amazing but anyway thank you for joining me thank you for listening and I'll see you next time please before you go like share subscribe that'd be great bye